Well, at long last, welcome back to Slovakia. It's been a good month, probably now, since I last actually put an actual Football Manager video up. Uh, the PC is back. It is working absolutely fine. And um, a big thanks to uh, Mend IT for fixing it. Glad I had the three year warranty. And uh, a huge thanks as well to um, my dear mother, whose brilliant idea meant that I got it back about a month earlier than I otherwise would have done. Um, when she come out, came up with the genius plan of why didn't I get it delivered to them? Because they can accept the delivery, whereas I couldn't because they wanted to deliver it on a weekday and I'm at work. So <clears throat> it's thanks to her that this wondrous journey may begin again. Uh, now, uh, you may have seen from the title of this video that things aren't quite going according to plan. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the plan is, but I'll walk you through what has been happening on the other side of the titles. <laughs> Right, well, one of the major things that has happened um, has been the transfer window. Now, as you can see here, we have had a lot of people leave. Now, Jan Minerik, who was basically our best centre-back, which was a fairly low bar, to be honest, um, he got signed by some Saudi side, I think. I think they're Saudi. For 135 grand. It was like, well, with that money and his wages gone we can replace him with someone probably better and i think we probably have uh henry addo that was already arranged ages ago uh, he's gone back to ghana i think it is so happy to have his wages off the um the books uh now orovich hanko Cherny were all young sort of b team players who didn't look like they had enough about them to make it here so we've let all them go and again got their minimal wages off the books uh, Mario Sauer he's gone out on loan he is sort of like fifth sixth choice central midfield so probably best he go out on loan to get some playing time rather than sit around doing nothing here uh, Radek Kriz another one better off getting loan time now Barry Pye who you will have never seen play because he had a long-term injury when I got here. He is only just over that. He has actually played for us, I believe. I don't think I managed to get him into a game. Um, but when I tr tried to re-sign him to a new deal, because his contract was expiring at the end of the season, as so many of them were, um, <sighs> negotiations fell through. Oop, sorry. <laughs> not used to the microphone being there anymore um, and um, yeah he decided that yeah he was he was going to kick up a fuss didn't want to re-sign was going to consider his options and that normally is a death knell so it was like right well in that case during the transfer window we'll see if anyone's interested in signing you I mean they can get you for free in six months time fortunately Blackburn don't seem to realise that. Uh, initially, Burnley came in with an offer for him, which I tried to rejig, and you know because they offered sort of like money and then instalments and some if he played X number of games, which I honestly don't think he ever is going to play X number of games. Um, he's just not going to be good enough, I don't think, to play at the level that Burnley will hope to be at. So I tried to rejig it. Burnley just said no, stuff it then. And he then got really upset and I had to promise to sell him if an offer came in. And then, lo and behold, towards the end of the transfer window, Blackburn popped up. 275 grand. And we can't turn that sort of money down. He wasn't on a great deal of wages, but um, obviously it got a little bit more wage bill down. And yeah, happy to, happy to take the money. As you can see... We have now £377,000 in the bank, thanks mainly to Barry Pye. Now, Lazar Stojanovic here, who we did pay money for, 
um, possibly a little more to come. He is a Serbian, and he was basically Minarik's replacement. Uh, his heading, marking, and tackling, all very good. Good positionally, decent pace, so he can... We, I've tweaked the tactic as well. <laughs> A lot's happened. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Mentals aren't fantastic, but he is decent, I think. I mean, it actually says there he's a good two-league player, so it doesn't really rate him that highly. But I think he's got most of the attributes in the right places. Good decision-maker, technically good. Positioning is okay, and his pace will get him to recover a lot of... Um, Know, sort of anything that other things mess up. Uh, now, another thing that happened was Canales, who was our Peruvian right back that we had on loan, went down with a very long term injury. So I went to our affiliate, Wolfsburg, and got this boy on loan. We're not paying anything, paying absolutely nothing for this boy. Fantastic crosser, physically excellent good decision maker good tackler i'm expecting big things from kevin labor's auger obviously only for this season i doubt they'll loan him to us next season they very often for some reason clubs come back with this oh we want to try him in a different environment and it's like well why he was doing well but anyway um we'll see he has come in his first game wasn't overly impressive i don't think but he actually i tell you like his league debut was fine he played a seven um didn't really set up much with that fantastic crossing of his but hopefully he'll get there now stefanos capino goalkeeper was another weak point we got some good youngsters but they're not good enough for the level we're at we need a bit more talent so for another 10 grand stefanos capino pretty solid goalkeeper i think he didn't play well in his debut more on that game in a minute um but he is definitely an improvement on what we had and he's also you know, nice and experienced and he's good for our level so i'm hoping for good things from him and then another loanee thomas vulcek who is just an even better and more well-rounded centre-back. Again, physically good, mentally decent. Uh, and again, he's going to be playing sort of like the cover role. And I think actually Stojanovic is going to be moved to sort of like one of the other positions, probably. Um, but yeah, he is good. We can afford his, his wages. And he is out of contract with his club at the end of the season and I've just noticed he's actually joining someone else at the end of the season so my hopes of signing him on a permanent basis have just crumbled before your eyes <sighs> I'll wait until I turn the camera off before I start crying um, I really had high hopes of, of being able to get this boy um, <sighs> hmm. never mind those high hopes may be dashed by what happens in today's episode because uh, actually let me take you to the club vision first as you can see here record a top half finish is required of me they are disappointed because we are eight points off of the top half and in three games time this league splits at which point we cannot finish top half I don't think there's anything in there that lets you sort of like, if you're in the relegation group, get in. Uh, oh no, you can get into the European places playoff. Whether they would let me get that far to try and save that and squeak into Europe somehow, honestly, I don't fancy our chances of getting through any games that have to be played against top half sides. We're not particularly good. Um, but yeah, if if they sort of decide that, well, you're now doomed to the bottom half of the table, no matter what you do, even if you can still squeak into Europe, then this might be my last game in charge of this side. Because if we don't win it, we can't overhaul Ruzon Berok. 
Uh, even if we win it, if they win, we can't overhaul them. Um, they play second place Spartak Trinava tomorrow. So we'll have to see how that goes. Um, I mean, it's at home, but you never know. Um, I mean, I'm confident we will not go down. We have got enough about us to beat a lot of these teams. Today's game is away to the bottom team in the table. Uh, following from our 2-0 defeat away to Podbrizova, which, I'll grant you, we created nothing. But neither did they really, and they scored a penalty and a goal from a corner. So, not great. However, this is key. So, uh, I think everyone is basically fit. That's pretty much, I think, my first choice 11. As you can see, we've gone to five at the back. The wing backs are pushing on. Part of this was to make Samuel Giddy happy because he kept on complaining. I had him playing in the defensive midfield role and he wanted to play central midfield. Um, so we basically rejigged the formation, dropped the defensive midfielder back into the actual defence um, and therefore made it another centre back and that meant Giddy was then freed up to play in central midfield where he's been decent um, but uh, yeah I mean we've we've had some decent games with this formation we've had some bad games um, it's yet to really sort of prove itself the new boys are trying to settle in I mean their form is absolutely terrible we need to step up Midfielders, get yourself sorted. Gashdos, make me proud, son. <clears throat> and well, here we go. Oh, actually, I've just just spotted. I'm in the wrong corner. Let me move myself live on camera for you there. Um. <clears throat> so yeah, so it, it it may all come to a horrible, sticky end if they decide that because that was. Because that was required, and I am basically going to fail it, because we've got to win our three games and hope they don't get more than two points. Or more than one point, actually. Um, so they don't, they don't even need a win to stop us getting there. Oh, as I could say, this is a narrow old pitch, isn't it? This is a very narrow pitch. Um, I don't know if that's going to present a problem to our wide play or not, but all right, go on, Yemets, hit it. Oh, clattered into a, a forest of legs. Stojanovic, we do commit an awful lot of people forward at corners, I have to say. One day that is going to really cost us. Fair hair. Oi, Gashdos. That's what we need. Oh. Well, that's a decent start at least. I mean, we should just be pressing this lot back. I mean, they've got nine points from 19 previous matches. So they're not a good side. And I think, I mean, we have improved this squad, I think, from before the transfer window. We've sort of got, a lot, got rid of a load of, a load of the chaff. Um, and hopefully added a few bits of wheat. Oh, come on, boys. You've got to do better than this. And start letting him get back into the game. Oh, I'll tell you what, just let him skip past you. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Mm -hmm. I don't want to shout yet. I mean, match ratings seem to be okay not doing too badly All right. um, hopefully you can't hear my PC that's the only thing it does seem to be a bit noisier since it's come back but 
being as it was completely dead before it left, I suppose it's only to be expected. You are a mile offside. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the three blind mice could have called that one. Right. Come on, lads. Let's get a second goal. I know what my teams are like for not getting second goals. Fair blaze is over. Uh, fair hair is in because um, Mark Iori was so bad in the last game. Played a 6.1. Um, and reacted really badly when I told him he was bloody useless. So, um, yeah, he's got dropped. <laughs> I think he's on the bench. But... You know, don't come to me complaining you don't like my harsh team talk if you've played a 6.1 and deserve to be spoken to somewhat harshly. I'm not having it, as we all know from my track record. Right, no highlight has actually been forthcoming so far from this scenario, has it? So we've quite nicely taken a corner and just... We do tend to take a lot of the short corners, and I'm not sure how much that's working for us. Fair hair? Puts it back. Giddy! First goal of the season. Making the most of that central midfield position. Arriving late on the edge of the box and firing arrow-like into the corner. Good work from Fairhair. Not sure how he knew he was there, but he picked him out beautifully. Lovely goal. Right, 2-0. There we go. Come on, boys. Let's give this lot a right thrashing. <clears throat> At least give ourselves hope. Gajdos. Oh, there we go. Martin Gajdos. Beautiful. Right, we've taken full command of this game. Oh, we are still in the cup. Uh, you'll be pleased to hear. I think, I mean, it's obviously, it's been a long time since you saw any of this, so you've probably forgotten what we got to. But we are in the quarterfinals and we are playing lower division opposition again. So there is hope on that front, but then that is again assuming I get to the point where I can play that game. We've got another league game after this before that cup game. Um, and I don't know how early the axe may fall if they decide that we are not getting to the top half. Uh, unfortunately, obviously, as you can see, we've got like an 11 point gap on the relegation places. We're not going down. We are more than good enough to stay up. Um, worryingly, if they do let me stay on, uh, my wage budget at the moment, where I've managed to sell some people and the bump, sort of like the transfer kitty into the wages, because freebies are the best way to go at the moment. Uh, but that wage budget is due to be cut by about a hundred thousand pounds next season. And whilst with all the people who'll be leaving on free transfers at the end of the season, gets us within that it doesn't leave us an awful lot for further improvements to the squad um right we're doing well boys keep going okay i don't even know if mark Yori actually is even on the bench i think i may have just punished him by completely dropping him because i saw slavic's name down there and i think slavic is was like one of my backup wingers. And we only tend to put one on the bench because obviously we need a couple of centre backs on there just because we play three from the start. So we need options just in case a couple of them decide to have off days. Uh, good block. Pavlovich heads clear. All right, come on, lads. Let's let's not just relax and. Let them back into it. Oh, you could. I mean, honestly, well, we'll never know if he was onside properly there or not, if that was the right call. Um, if I was them, I'd be deeply suspicious that we didn't get shown. Because you know what that normally means for my boys. Normally means, yeah, you were actually were onside and they've disallowed it for no good reason. Right, Pavlovich is going to have to come off because he's getting a bit tired. Uh, I am going to... I am going to demand more because yet again you've had, oh, you're playing quite well, boys. And you've heard that and thought, job done then. I don't need to bother any more, is there? God, annoying. Um, 
right, well, we are going to put him on for him, and then we're going to swap fair hair round to the right, because he can play the right. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, but your ideas up, boys. Let's, let's not be that team. Let's not go looting, shall we? This is looking horribly familiar. Even the goal they scored is a roughly the right time. Oh, don't. Don't even think about it. You can see another one here, and I'm going to shout at you like you've never believed. Oh, my God. Right. What are you playing at? Again, why is it we can never just have a nice game where we're comfortable and win it easily, can we? So 3-0 up at half-time, and all of a sudden... You have just decided you're going to make me sweat for the next hour. And I realise the game's only 45 minutes long, but you'll still make me sweat for an hour. Because... <sighs> this game was fully in hand. All of a sudden, you let them score two goals from outside the box, and now... I mean, if we don't win this, then that is it. I am completely screwed, because we can't even make the top half if we don't win this. I'm going to berate you again in a second. Because yet again, letting it all slip away, aren't we? This is why we're not going to be top half. Because you do things like this. Really? Really? With the overhead there? Really? Right, I'm going to berate you again because you've been absolutely useless still. They are completely on top in this half. What are you even doing? And I don't care how unhappy and annoyed you are at that. Is there a slope on this pitch or something? What is it? Like Yeovil? I absolutely cannot believe you have managed to do this. How have you thrown this away? Right, you get on there. He's obviously completely useless. Right, get off. Get off my pitch. This is the second game in a row you've been hopeless, Cathino. We just spend money on you for no reason whatsoever. Honestly, I want to be sacked at this point. If this is the sort of thing you're going to do, just fire me now. I'd even wait to the final whistle. How have we actually managed this? I mean, seriously, how have we been so completely outplayed in the second half that you have thrown away the most comfortable lead? They have done nothing in the first half. And even if we somehow score a winner, which we're not going to, are we? Because he is so far clear of the defence. Oh my god, this is going to be 4-3. Do you know what? I might just resign. I might actually just physically resign. I'm certainly throwing something. I'm not even going to talk to him now. That is just a surrender of all surrenders. They haven't even out xg us. That is... You should be... Unutterably ashamed of yourselves. Throw a water bottle. It's disappointing that we didn't win. From 3-0 up, I would say it is. 
getting a really good insight on what it's like to be a Luton fan right now. Can I just throw the water bottle and not say anything? Can I just throw one? Actually, do you know what? I'm just, I'm literally just not gonna say anything. No, I'm just, I'm just leaving. I'm not gonna say anything to you at all. I'm not even gonna give you the satisfaction of the bollocking you deserve. Well, I can report that Ruzon Berok managed to win against Spartak Trnava anyway, so even if we'd have held on to the very convincing 3-0 lead we had at half-time, uh, we would still have been doomed to the bottom half of the table. The board have told me they are very disappointed. Um, they haven't sacked me yet. Uh, obviously the supporters are very disappointed as well. I had an interview where I basically said, well, it's up to them, um, and kind of criticised the, the way the club was run because they don't give me any real help. There's no financial backing whatsoever. They want to be one of the sort of best of the rest, but they don't seem to be prepared to put any money into it whatsoever. Um, at the moment, I may just go to the end of this section of the league, which will include the Slovnaft Cup quarterfinal. <clears throat> but yeah, not exactly the return we were hoping for. Um, and who knows where I will be for the next episode. Um, but at the moment, I don't want to be here. With that said, thank you very much for joining me. Um, maybe drop a pity like or something, because I need some cheering up right now. And um, see you next time, wherever that may be. Bye-bye for now.